Hi, it's Jody. It's been about eight weeks since I've made a video. Um, not since I've made any video, since I've made a video with the intention to put it out in the world. It was four weeks before I even turned my camera on after my last video. I've had days where I have wanted to come out and speak to an issue or an idea and I stopped myself and said, no, you can't do that. You can't say that. And the reason that I've remained so quiet is because I have felt all of the same things that everyone has during this time. I have experienced all the same feelings that everyone else has during this time. I don't even know where to begin. I have like 12 things to say. <laughs> I could make 12 different videos. <sighs> We're living in a time that is unlike anything we have ever experienced before. People are dealing with a level of uncertainty and fear that we have never experienced. I am 50 years old. I turned 50 on Easter. In 50 years, I have never seen anything unravel the world to this degree for this length of time in the 50 years that I have been on this planet. So it is understandable that a lot of people are freaking out right now. It's understandable. Now, how we choose to handle our freak out is on us. We have personal responsibility. Whether we think we do or not, we have personal responsibility for how we choose to handle our reactions. Now, feelings are normal and they're allowed and they're gonna happen. Personally, only talking about myself here, I have gone from scared, I started eight weeks ago, I was at my daughter, she just had the baby and the whole thing that's going on in the world, I refuse to say the C word, I don't want to give it any power or claim it into my life. I have a very um, specific set of beliefs that I choose to live by at 50 and I am not even saying the word, but the thing that's happening in the world, that's what I keep referring to it as. It started encroaching on my life March 14th. They made a change in Illinois. I was at my daughter's in Illinois and they made a change in Illinois as it was arriving, it was showing up at hospitals Nobody knew what it was then. Nobody had any facts. All we had was fear being passed all around the world. And it started showing up one case here, one case there. And if anyone got one case, they immediately shut everything down because we didn't know yet what we were dealing with, right? Now I get that. But I went to the hospital to see my daughter in the maternity ward and I got turned away. And that suddenly made this, whatever this is happening, enter my life and get me really freaked out. And I live on a campground on a mountain. I live in a campground on a mountain on the Cherokee Indian Reservation. So I immediately thought, oh my God, if this thing is that bad that they're suddenly making these kinds of changes, will I even be able to get home and get onto the reservation? Because I was only traveling with my truck and my trailer that I live in is here. And so now I'm at my daughter's in Illinois and the underlying current of every moment as I'm trying to be there for her as she came home from the hospital, be with my new granddaughter is, oh my God, am I going to be able to get back in my home? Are they going to shut it down before I get there? And I did end up cutting my trip short by a week. I was supposed to stay with, with her for two weeks and I ended up only staying one week and then turning around and getting back here. And sure enough, they did lock down the reservation to all outside visitors. And then because I'm a work camper, which means you're basically a contracted worker for a season at a time, and I don't have my driver's license and my car registration and my car insurance on this address, I have it on a stable full-time RVer address that's out of state. I didn't know if 
I was going to be able to stay here once I got here. And they went in lockdown. Then we had a few days where my boss was scrambling to get everybody papers to prove that we belong here so that if we left the reservation, we'd be allowed back in through the roadblock. There was a roadblock until yesterday. So like six weeks at least there was a roadblock and I had papers to come in my house, which that set off a new level of fear for me because it was like, oh my God, we're living in Nazi Germany. I have papers to prove I live here. And that whole fear thing came up and I had to deal with that. And then I'm watching day by day over eight weeks time as each state started to shut down. When I was leaving my daughters in Illinois, her friend in Ohio said, yeah, your mom's right. She needs to get home because Ohio is talking about closing its borders. So now I'm somebody at that time, I, I had my birthday in April. So I was about to turn 50 and I'm hearing that states might close borders. When I was a child in elementary school, it was mandated law in Illinois. Like I know in Florida, it was like in fourth grade, you learn all the Florida history. When I was a child in Illinois, sixth grade, everyone had in social studies, we learned all about the Constitution and our constitutional rights. And being an impressionable young child, I took it all very, very seriously. And being a history buff, it was about the same time in my life when my world was rocked by something my aunt had said um, that turned me into a massive researcher and history buff. I was raised Catholic and it was Holy Week and we were at my grandmother's house and I heard my aunt tell my grandma, because they were talking about the Last Supper and how Holy Week it's celebrated Thursday night and then Friday's Good Friday. And I heard my aunt tell my, my grandmother, well, come on, Ma, this is just when we celebrated. It's not like he could have actually had that meal that night and been to where he was doing the cross the next day. And my child brain went, what? They've been lying to me my whole life. What do you mean? Suddenly I'm studying geography. I'm studying all these things. And it was like the first time in my life that I had the awareness that I'm being taught things. I'm being taught by my religion. I'm being taught by my school. I'm being taught by my parents and my elders. I'm being taught all kinds of information. And I'm just blindly taking it for exactly the way they say it. And oh my God, I have to go research this for myself and find out what she's talking about. What is, what is Aunt Dorothy talking about? That if he had this meal over here, he couldn't have been over here the next morning to do the cross. So actually it would have been a few days between the last supper as we know it and the cross. And oh my God, like my mind was blown out of a box, right? And so that's, that's where I'm at when I'm learning the constitution, right? About the same time in my life and I was very impressionable and willing to learn and I want to know everything I can now because because I got to research and, and, and find out stuff for myself. And so I just have this underlying thing in myself about, you know, we live in a country that goes by certain rules and laws and it's the way it's supposed to be. and. As we know now from, at least me and all the people in the circles I travel in, we know that when you are triggered by something, it is usually something that started as a child and has been, you've been carrying it your whole life and every time something triggers, it always goes back to that first initial childhood thing. And I had the realization when I was getting all upset about living in Nazi Germany because I had papers to, if I left the reservation, <laughs> sounds so funny to say it out loud now um you know i had to sit and realize oh it's a childhood trigger because of how you took on information as a child now we're here in this moment we're rational adults we're gonna look at this from the big picture first of all it's the indian reservation it's not the country they're their own govern governance and they have the right to do whatever they want to do Second of all, there's a lot of unknown still in this. This is back in second week of March, right? Third week of March by the time I got home and we got the lockdown and everything happened. And we don't know anything yet. So we're gonna just sit calmly and we're gonna observe. 
And that's when I clicked over into observer mode for the rest of this and tried really hard. There are some places online where I commented on people's things or, or replied to something, but I'd say I've done a really good job, 90% of this, to not put my personal reactions out in the world. I mean, I'm human, I'm not perfect, but I've really tried hard to sit right here in my own body, observing, observing, and when something came up, oh my God, sit with it for a couple days, right? And then during this time, you know, there was a, a week when Wyatt we had to go back to Virginia for like a week and I sat here just freaked out because it was again where everything was changing. It was starting to look worse. They were shutting more things down. I was like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Uh, once again, our opening of our campground got postponed and it was like, oh my God, you know, so I just sat here and ate and watched Netflix and scrolled Facebook like I haven't in two years. Like in 2017, when I left my job and started this whole, you know, new direction, whatever you want to call it. Um, I had really trained myself well to only go on groups on Facebook or directly to friends. Um, and I never scroll and I generally don't see what's on people's walls. But during this time, I have scrolled Facebook. And, like, and for me, it's a lot. It's like, you know, for five or ten minutes, you know, once a day or twice a day. Most people are on there for hours every day, right? But I was actually scrolling Facebook and, and then I was noticing I was eating more and I was watching more Netflix and just sitting there and, and I gained like, like 20 pounds, like just in my face, <laughs> like, oh my God. And that's what made me realize what I was doing. And it was like, no, you need to like, stop, just stop, take a breath. You need to get back to your meditation every day. You need to get back to what serves you and get connected to yourself. And by the time he got back, then he had to like deal with all the you know pressures and worries you know worried about his family worried about his brother like we're all worried about our families right in different states i've got kids in four different states parents in two different states and you know so then i was helping him you know just being there for him and it, together then we started eating more again <laughs> eating chips and ice cream and all kinds of crap we never touch and then finally I was like, okay, this has got to stop. Okay, we have let ourselves have the human, oh my God, you know, but it's time to rein it in and get back to what we know to be true. And it's time to just take a breath, get back to walking in nature more, get back to taking, you know, an hour to meditate before bed or when we first wake up or whatever, make sure we each have time alone every day to just sit with our thoughts and process because this is an awful lot coming on everyone right and that's when I really got back into meditating again and I um, I really just started you know started processing all the, the things I had been seeing and taking in and watching the world change I started to sorry no matter where I go I feel like I have sun on my face really started just taking in you know okay now we know this much now we know that much I am that person, if you go through the trouble of sending me a link um, to read an article or watch a video or listen to a recording, I will actually read the article, watch the video in its entirety, listen to the entire recording before I make up my own mind. That's how I live this life. That's, that's how I got here, by learning that I needed to stop putting myself in a box of beliefs and always be open. Even if I completely disagree or think I do, I will always be open to hearing other ideas. It was other ideas that got me to walk away from a career it was being exposed to new ideas that I thought were crazy that got me to quit my job and buy a travel trailer and have the life that I have today. I got here because I finally decided it was more important to be happy than it was to be right. Because believe me, I mean, you can ask my friends, back in like 2008 and around that time, I was, I was nuts. I was nuts shoving my views on everybody else. And it's funny because 2020 for me started in January with people letting me down, with people hurting me, with people stabbing me in the back, with people teaching me the lesson 
that others can only meet you where they are, not where you are. And the best thing you can do is allow everyone to be who and what they need to be and stay focused on yourself. How can I make me better so that the Jody that's showing up in the world every day is a better value to the world that I'm showing up in? That's what I have control over. And that lesson in so many ways was shown to me over and over in the last six months and really preparing me for such a time as this. And so I've just been sitting here trying really hard to stay in observer mode. There have been days when I was going to make a video about something I saw and then I, you know, I saw, oh, I woke up, I'm having coffee, I'm looking at something on my phone, I got to make a video about that. And then as I was getting out of the shower and drying my hair, it was like, oh, I can't make a video and say that because I've done the exact same thing and that would make me a hypocrite. Okay, no video today. That's happened like four times on four totally different issues. Oh, you can't tell them that because you'd be a hypocrite because you do the exact same thing. Oh, okay, well then I'll shut my mouth. Like I check myself. I check myself. And I, again, I'm like anyone else. I'm just a human doing the best I can every day. I'm gonna make a ton of mistakes and I made plenty. But people never pay attention to that. They only pay attention to your successes. If you look at any human being, we all have wild successes and stupid human mistakes and accidents and things we wish we hadn't said and done. Oh, if only I could have done that different, it would have turned out different. Like we all have that, okay? So that's just, you know, that's just there. But how many of us are actively just like when you're having a reaction to something, sit for five minutes. See if you feel the same after your heart stops pounding, after your adrenaline slows down. You know, maybe take a minute and just go, it's okay, it's all right. If I still feel the same way, I can type in five minutes. Like, do you ever do that? Because I try to, I try to. So I'm in observer mode, observer mode. I don't know, I keep tripping over that word. Um, I woke up and had coffee and took a shower and took a walk and I, I probably need to eat my blood. I'm starting to feel like my blood sugar's dropped and I should go eat. But I don't know, That's I just wanted to catch people up on where I've been, what I'm doing um, so much. Like I can make 12 videos on the things going on in our life right now with our home and our work and all these different things. But just like everybody else, I have fear, I have um, you know, anger, frustration, I have ideas. Oh, the only other thing I'd like to leave you with is everybody has their own truth. No one's actually wrong. There's a million ideas out there right now, all different angles to this thing that we're all experiencing. And every single one of us has our own truth based on our own journey that we have lived our entire lives. It's okay if someone is scared of the virus. And it's also okay if a mother is scared how she's going to feed her child and keep a roof over his head tonight. They're both equally valid. And we're allowed to live in a world that allows both. I do not have paralytic fear of this virus, but that's because of my personal beliefs. I do not discredit someone else. I have people in my own immediate family that their primary concern is paralytic fear over this virus and nothing else matters. And if you don't have paralytic fear over this virus, you're wrong. I honor them and I'm taking all the precautions and I will help my workplace make our, our campground ready with all the logical precautions before we open because we need to be respectful of every aspect of this issue. And I just wish, I just want to put the message out in the world that I wish people could just stop and take a breath for a minute and understand 
that everything that is happening is affecting every single human in some way and it's all valid that's 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 what i've taken away from being the observer anyway i'm i have so much more to say but this is long enough and yeah that's how i'm doing it's where i've been i'd love it if you would comment and let me know how you were doing i'd love to know what you're observing during this time thanks for watching